Now let's take a look at the conformity application. This screen is divided into two portions. On the left hand side, we have a listing of the accounts tied to this customer. Here we see a Microsoft Azure account and seven Amazon AWS accounts. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll be focusing on the Amazon AWS accounts. Overall, you can see that the customer has a 67% compliance score. This is calculated by the number of checks run against their environment times the number of passes or failures that they have within their environment. You see a multiple number of checks running because the checks run against every instance that's tied to their account. Let's take a deeper look into the main dashboard. As we scroll down, we're given a compliance level comparison. This comparison lists the accounts that are tied to this customer, as well as their overall compliance of those accounts within the Amazon AWS well-architected framework. Here you see there are five pillars of the well-architected framework, starting with security and ending with performance and efficiency. Each account is given a score in its level of compliance within that particular pillar of the well-architected framework. Scrolling down, we're brought to the Threat Monitoring Dashboard. This dashboard has two radio buttons. Each of these buttons gives a report tied to the various elements of threat monitoring that are available within this customer's account. Note that threat monitoring is part of the advanced package and is not enabled by default with the base elements of security and compliance. Since this account does have the add-on, we're able to see activity as it's tied to this account. If we click on the user activity button, we see a list of the users that have logged into the environment within the last three months. If we go back and click on the event monitoring dashboard, we see a list of events that have occurred within the account and the environment again within the last three months. Each of these is maximizable and you can get detailed information by clicking on the Event Details button. To get out of any menu within the conformity application, simply click to the left of the view that you are in and you will be brought back to the screen previous. Further down within the dashboard, we're brought to the Compliance Status view. Again, these map directly back to the five pillars of the Well-Architected Framework and give a compliance score tied to each pillar. The user does have the opportunity to improve each score based on the particular pillar of which it's tied. In this instance, if the user wishes to improve their security pillar compliance, they can click on the Improve button and be brought to a filtered view that gives the user a list of all the checks that have run that are tied to the security compliance framework pillar. Scrolling down, we're brought to the Compliance Level Evolution Chart. Again, this ties directly back to the five pillars of the well-architected framework. Here, we're examining the security pillar. This instance is relatively unchanged, and we'd want to see a more spiked or positive improvement in this chart in a production customer environment. Scrolling down, we're brought to a map that showcases the status per AWS region, meaning if a customer has accounts or instances in that region, the conformity application will alert on the most critical findings by region. Therefore, if the customer looks and wishes to investigate the status of those accounts and those instances within that region, they can simply click on the radio button and see what's happening within that region. Again, they're given the opportunity to improve the compliance of that region by simply clicking the improve button. The last report visible here on the dashboard is the most critical failures report. Arguably, this is one of the most important areas for your customer to be examining as it lists the highest severity risk level findings within the customer's environment. Here the customer is able to get a quick and immediate listing of the most critical instances of the checks that have run that the customer should pay attention to. In this instance, we see the top rules both tied to S3 bucket with public access. Maximizing these allows the customer to see which instances are failing as well as do some configuration of these checks. We'll take a deeper dive into these checks 
the resolution, and the configuration in the next portion. Now let's take a look at a specific account within the customer's AWS environment. When we maximize the AWS accounts group, we're given the option to look at all of the accounts under that group. Here I'll click the master account. We're presented with a very familiar dashboard view that has all the same charts and functionality that was presented in the previous all account view. However, note that the numbers that are returned here relay only back to the master account. The number one function here is the browse all checks button. When we click this, we're given the view that showcases all the checks that have run against the master account. Here, again, I can filter down by a particular view. In this instance, I would like to see all the failures in this account, which returns 515 checks. In addition, though, I would like to see the failures that are categorized high or above. So I will unclick the medium as well as the low radio buttons. In doing so, I'm returned with 10 filtered checks. As a handy hint, if you scroll all the way up, you're able to see a breadcrumb trail of all the filtered checks that have been enacted for this view. Scrolling down, I'm presented with 10 findings. Again, I can maximize each finding and see the resource in which it's tied to. But let's take a look at some of the functionality with each check and each finding. First off, I can send the rule to another administrator within the conformity application. This is done if the resource is not something I'm in control of or for change control reasons. Secondly, I can configure this rule. In this example, I'm looking at an S3 bucket with default encryption not enabled. Perhaps this S3 bucket is part of our public website, and I would tag it that way. In this instance, I wouldn't want our public website to be encrypted, and thus I would want an exception added here. With the tagging feature, I'm able to create exceptions to a rule as well as add notes to why that exception is being created. Additionally, I can change the severity of the finding. So perhaps to me, this isn't a high finding, but rather an extreme finding. The ability to modify that is important for the uniqueness of each customer's environment. Lastly, I'm able to suppress the rule. I would only do this if I feel as though the rule is a false positive, and I must create a note with each suppression that I create. That way, auditing and review of the reason that this rule was suppressed can be done. The foremost functionality that's available here is the resolution button. Let's click on this button and see what happens. As you can see, I'm brought to the conformity website. Specifically, I'm brought to the rule or the finding that is tied to the S3 bucket default encryption. There are three things that I should note here. First off, a high-level overview of the finding, as well as the pillar that it's tied to. Secondly, an English definition of what the finding means and why it's important for the customer to pay attention. And then lastly, a set of steps. These steps are both performed via the AWS console or command line interface and give a detailed list of how to audit and resolve the finding. Now let's take a look at what is arguably one of the most valuable features, the compliance standard and framework view. Here, I'm able to select a specific compliance standard to audit against. In this instance, perhaps the customer is a retailer and PCI is of importance to them. I would unselect all the frameworks and select PCI specifically. Note above, I have in the breadcrumb trails PCI DSS, high, very high, and extreme level of findings, as well as all those that are failure. Five results have been returned. Generating a report off this would be quite valuable to auditors as well as leadership in addition to the cloud security architects and DevOps team. In addition to the radio button view of compliance, there's also a tab that allows you to view by the standard or framework. In this instance, I'm able to specifically view or click on the standard or framework radio button and get results tied to this account. 
These results are tied specifically back to the controls of that standard. So here, I can see the control standard as well as the results of failures tied to that standard. This instantly gives any audit, compliance, or leader a view and insight tied to this framework as it relates back to the specific controls of the framework. One last thing. If you go back to the filter checks, you are able to search by service, resource type, region, or rule. So for the exist example, if I'd like to search for rules and checks tied to the S3 service, I now see the breadcrumb trail as having been updated with my search parameter. If I scroll down, I see only two filtered checks returned. This makes this view highly valuable for specific targeted search that could be done for hunting or finding compliance within a particular service in the user's environment. Let's return to the main dashboard. If you look at the top, you see a feature called Profile. Profiles are a bundle of rules that can be likened unto a hardening of a server, meaning I can standardize and create a set of checks that are rolled out with every account or instance that I publish to the cloud. This way, I can create an infrastructure security baseline or well-architected framework baseline for every account that's created within my environment. Here I can activate a specific set of rules and tie those rules to every single instance that's created in my DevOps process. Rules are able to be applied, modified, added, or deleted by a simple clicks and searching of those rules within the environment. Let's take a look at the template scanner piece. Returning back to the main dashboard, I click on the template scanner bar located at the top of the screen. Here, I'm able to upload a CloudFormation template and have it run against the same bot that performs the checks in the customer's production environment. This is best demonstrated via our wiki to showcase where and how the template scanner fits into the build process that's tied to your customer's agile development or CICD pipeline. Here we see the template scanner shifts left and gets closer to the build process. Note that the results of the template scanner tie and return very similarly to the way in which the results are displayed within the cloud conformity application. Therefore, the user is easily able and familiar with the results and the findings. The idea here is to improve the templates that are being developed upon at the customer's environment such that the templates themselves are more secure, compliant, and tied back to the well-architected framework. Let's take a look at some of the integration. Click on the settings button of a particular account and go to the communication settings. Here, we're brought via the update communication settings button a set of integrations that are available to fit in with the customer's development process. If they use JIRA, we can integrate with that JIRA instance and tie our remediation and findings to the tickets that are developed within JIRA. The same goes for ServiceNow as well as Slack. These integrations are only needing to be configured once and provide instant value by fitting into the customer's existing development process, not requiring any additional screens to log into or any additional work that's tied with checking the results within the Cloud Conformity dashboard. Thanks for joining me for this overview of the Conformity application.